must be careful how we speak and how we hear, Lord, and what we say about that which has already been said in order to be right with the Word and right with you, Lord. So help us this morning, Lord. We pray by the Holy Spirit you've given unto us. In Jesus' name we pray. A service without his will or apart from his will. And uh, just in thinking of the title of this message, one might well ask, how can anyone do God a service? So how can anyone do a God a service? Does God need anything done for him in the light of, he, of Romans, the 11th chapter, 34 to 36? For who hath known the mind of the Lord, who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again? So it lets you know there, <clears throat> if you would do God a service, you would have to know what he wanted done, and then you would be uh, have to realize that you can only do with what he gives you, or the service wouldn't be of any value, because he says, or who hath first given to him? When did we ever give God anything? God always gave us everything. And so therefore, this comes back to, can you really do God a service? So let's go to 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and just follow that same thought through. In verse 7, Who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? So we're looking at the title here in a, in a very strong light. <clears throat> Is it possible that anybody can do God a service? Well, it is quite evident then that the subject is not so concerned about conceiving and performing some service directed at God personally, but rather acting in all things always in accord with God's desire from us considering especially how he would have us do what he desires. So we just can't think in terms of doing something special for God. Although I don't obviate that thought perfectly. But you see, the thrust then of the message would not be somebody really doing something for God as though God needed something done. He said, uh, if I were hungry, he said, I would have told you. He said, I'm not only not hungry, but he said, what would you give me? The cattle upon a thousand hills are mine. What, what could you do for me? So when you come to something really personal, <clears throat> you're not looking at it that way. It, you, you only could look at that obliquely. You could never meet it head on. You'd have to think of it in terms of... of uh, God, should he want something done, uh, it would be a matter of what God should want acted upon would be have to be per perfectly in the scripture and particularly as pertaining to his kingdom and our part in it, whether it be direct worship of God, and you can do that, or serving him in our relationship to him and the members of his kingdom or even non-members of his kingdom and that must always be done <clears throat> according to certain precepts which we'll talk about. So what we're seeing here then is anybody rendering a service unto God, so-called service unto God, it would have to be something in relationship uh, to God's kingdom or non-kingdom, the people in it, and what could be done, if anything, that would be pleasing to God and glorifying Him and thinking of the welfare of others. Even the scripture says, how can you say you love God and hate your brother? Uh, because you see your brother, <clears throat> and if you hate him, how can you love something you don't see? Yeah. Although the scripture says, uh, not having seen him, we do love him. God puts that love in his heart. So there are three little precepts that Brother Branham laid down here, and we look at them uh, concerning this service. What, if anything, is to be acted on? You would have to know, uh, is it something you should be doing? Something that's pertinent to you. Uh, secondly, are you authorized to do it? Or who is authorized to do it? First of all, there has to be something made clear. 
and a person authorized. And then the third one, when is it supposed to be done? Now, of course, that would obviate such things as well, giving to the poor and uh, helping the indigent. <clears throat> but you notice that even that in Scripture is limited. Because the Bible said if a man doesn't work, he's not going to eat. And uh, you just don't take care of moochers. Now, you might help them a couple of times over the hump, but they better get cracking. You know, you know the Didache, <clears throat> they claim written about the first two centuries. This is tough on preachers. But do you know that Didache said, if a man comes to your church or gathering and he expects welfare more than three days, you brand him as a phony. <laughs> I'm sorry, that sounds good. And it says he's supposed to be content with just enough to get him to the next place. Even Jesus said, don't take script and this and that. <clears throat> so, you're looking at something here in this message Brother Branham is preaching that is beyond just normal situations and uh, that which we could perhaps uh, gather by ourselves. It would take something very pointed to give us the understanding of this message. To bring this clearly to our attention, Brother Branham first used the illustration of David trying to bring the ark home. Now you notice that this was an intervention for the glory of God, for the sake of the people, in order to bring God and the people together, because it was the only way it could be done. Now to you and me that sounds very far out, because we're used to this freedom which we have in Christ by the Holy Spirit, this universal freedom. But you're going back to an unchanging God whose ways don't change in spite of the fact that the geography and the people have changed. So you're going to have to stick to a precept here. And you can't just say this is something that is different from us. You're wrong. It is 100% directed to you. You follow? Okay. <clears throat> David trying to be narco. Then he referred to Micaiah the prophet refusing to act without direct permission from God, even when it could be said that according to the very commandment and promise of God, it should be done. So as we continue this message, reading it and talking about it, I want you to realize that Brother Branham is once more in a veiled manner not interposing, but literally showing the truth. Call it interposition if you want. doesn't matter to me what you call it. But the actual truth is he is showing you something in this hour, <clears throat> and it is the hour of prophets, yeah. most of which are false. Mm -hmm. And if you let your minds go, and remember the last church age was Pentecostal. And they're full of prophets. Everything is prophesy, 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 prophesy for me, over me, with me, to me, and you know, set the order straight for God because he's fooled. Prophets, prophets, prophets. Jesus himself said in this hour of the appearing, which is the presence, that the great problem would be false prophets arising, and you know as well as I do that they will be accepted as genuine prophets, and as always, the true prophet is shunted to one side. Now that has to be. <clears throat> I don't care if anybody says, show me a true prophet. Now every church says, show me a true prophet. Bless God, my church and my people come. That's a lie from the pit of hell, and the person that says it is no longer in the security what he thinks he's in, but he's in danger of the pit of hell, because Jesus was that prophet, and they couldn't wait to kill him. And there hasn't been a prophet that hasn't been mauled or marred somewhere down the road. Mm -hmm. Amen. So anybody says any different, he's no friend of mine. Tell you right now, I said goodbye, Charlie. It wasn't even nice knowing you. Mm -hmm. I've only thought that of two people in my 70 years. I wish I'd never known you. But I tell you, I can do without the prophets. Now this is what this message is about. So you listen as we read it. <clears throat> We're going to recap on page 13. This is about Jehoshaphat came down from Jerusalem to meet with King Ahab. 
Now, first Ahab said, we've got a place up here at Ramah Gilead that actually belongs to us. Now, that's thus said the Lord, because Joshua divided it for the people and gave it to them, but the Philistines had taken it over. And he said, here our children need bread, and we haven't got enough land to raise the bread on. And our enemy, the Philistines, feed their children that those heathens off the very ground that Jehovah God gave us. That's very strange. And he said, here we, the people of God, are sitting here with our children so needy. And our enemy feeds their children on the ground that God called us out of Egypt in order to give it to us. Now that would raise a theologian, wouldn't it? Make him rise up, see? And he said, shall we go up and take our grounds that God gave us? <clears throat> How many foolish birds in the end say, How let's go in and get the Holy Ghost, bless God. So Pentecost very nicely lays hands on them, got them all talking in tongues. And that's the Holy Ghost. That's a gift of the Holy Ghost. God makes the rain to shine on the, the sun to shine on the just and unjust, the rain to fall on the just and unjust. <clears throat> so who's got what? Yeah. You see? <clears throat> Jehoshaphat said, I'll help you. We're brothers. Now, Joshua, uh, Jehoshaphat, however, is a good man, a king, a righteous man who loved the Lord. And Ahab was a lukewarm believer. So they brought them down, and, jo and Joshua said, that brought the prophets down, listen, <clears throat> let us consult the Lord first. <clears throat> now, Here's a very tricky thing. I just read paragraph 58 here, which is 100% correct. That land belonged to Israel according to God. It was theirs. Why do you have to bother consulting God to take what's yours? You see, anybody thinks that's the way it goes, but you go back on your own spirits if you're truly born again. Did you consult with God just because he said, unto us a child is given, son, uh, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given? <coughs> And he became the propitiation for our sins. He said, well, hallelujah, I'll take that. <clears throat> and you know, millions are doing that, and they've got what they call proof tech salvation, and don't get anything from God, or never get past justification if they get that, mm -hmm. because of just joining a church. <clears throat> now, let me ask you a question. Did you consult with God concerning what God promised in his book said? Now, most of us didn't, but we did know that we came to God and asked that he do something for us. Now, you've got to really consult with God. There's no way you cannot consult with him and get anything, but we're dealing with a bigger thing than just this. We're dealing with the church itself in the crisis of a present, of a present time. <clears throat> now, you think, well, hey, why do we need to consult? Just take God these words. Now, Josh, Joshua said, we ought to find out about this. <clears throat> see, if, see if David would have done what Joshua did, uh, but he didn't. So, jo so Joshua said, shouldn't we do this, consult the prophets? And quickly an Israelite, Ahab said, certainly I've got 400 Hebrews like we are, Hebrew prophets for an organization. I'll consult them, they are prophets. And you say, that stumbles me, Brother Branham, a prophet, yeah. There was one at the time of Jeremiah who said they'd only been down there, be down there two years, and Jeremiah said 70. This man put a yoke around his neck, and the prophet broke it. That's Hananiah. He said, thus Israel is going to break the yoke of the bondage of the Philistines. You know what happened to him? He got killed. All right, now, you got the word, stay with it. Now, <clears throat> prophets here are men who are merely foretelling events, and we'll see where anybody can do that. And you can go completely wrong on it. A prophet is more than a foreteller. He is a forth teller, telling forth the word of God. <clears throat> what is given to be written in the chronicles of the word as part of the Holy Scripture, the canon here. Or he can also tell you what that word means if he's been so ordained of God to do it. <clears throat> so the prophets, the prophets came up and prophesied and said, Go on up, the Lord is with us. Now, they weren't vindicated prophecy. They, just, they, were, they had an office, they were prophesying. And one of them, I believe, forget his name, the chief Zedekiah, I believe, he put two horns in front of him and said, Thus saith the Lord by this, and the man is very sincere, You'll push your enemy plumb back into their lands <clears throat> and take what belongs to God, it's given to you. I don't believe he was a hypocrite. I believe he was a good man. I believe all those prophets were. Now, he's speaking of good people mistaken. 
Now, they're good people. They read the Bible. They said, this is what the Bible says. Okay. You say prophets, yes. Remember the very man that consented to kill Jesus Christ prophesied because it was his office. What was his office? High priest. He was high priest that year, and being that he had that office and held that office, the Spirit of God came to him. <clears throat> that didn't mean he was saved or anything about it. And he prophesied because it was his office that did it. Now, you notice it said it was his office that did it. Now, that's different language than what you and I are used to hearing. The man was controlled by an office, whether he knew it or not. The Bible says so. He prophesied not knowing his words were really right on that one occasion. But his words all the rest of the time were wrong. He couldn't line up the scripture to the prophecy. But he could line with that one because Jesus must be betrayed and destroyed. <clears throat> all right, let's just take a look again at 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter, where Paul is speaking about himself and prophets. And he said, if any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, that's full of the Holy Ghost, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Now, how could they acknowledge that except they had some way of knowing? <clears throat> Paul was thoroughly vindicated before them. And furthermore, there'd be a witness in everybody's heart that this was the true revelation based upon a vindicated prophet of, Rep of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18. <clears throat> now, and these prophets, being prophets of office, prophets, prophesied. And the Spirit of God came on them, men with gifts of the Spirit. So they had gifts of the Spirit. Okay. <clears throat> Let's just think of those people. Do you realize, though, to begin, Bob, that Paul never called himself a prophet? He called himself an apostle. But an apostle can't do what he did. An apostle can only disseminate, be a front man, a missionary, a man that goes out to disseminate. He's a sower. <clears throat> In a very highly complicated, powerful office. Where did he get the word? He admits that God gave it to him face to face, just like Moses. So unqualified, he would be one of the great prophets of all history. <clears throat> yeah. Moses then Paul. In our day, we saw William Branham, Miller Fire with him. He'd fall in the same category. Okay, let's keep a little reading more then. I realize, and we'll talk about this. I realize I'm talking to 99% Pentecostals. Many times a man, God, deal, uh, God will deal with him, give them gifts. And the people will squeeze in on those people. If they're not perfectly called and sent to God, he'll cause that man or woman to say something that isn't his will because the people constrain them to do it. Okay, what we're looking at then are, apart from the gift of God to the church, which is a five-fold ministry, there are gifts of the Spirit that differ from Ephesians 4. <clears throat> so let's go to Ephesians 4 and look at this. Now this is going to deal with a true five-fold ministry. And true is true. Mm -hmm. Now let's understand that. Verse 7, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now he that ascended, what is it? But he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. Now that's not the body. He that had descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heaven, <clears throat> that he might fill all things. That's when he took the, that thing, that spirit took the body with him. Now watch. And he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. A five-fold ministry. Now that's the gifts that he gave to the church in order to bring what? The perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's a complete body, completely with every member in, <clears throat> every member child trained, every member ready to go off in a rapture. And those that preceded us to come up in a resurrection. We henceforth be no more children, 
tossed to and fro, and carried off every wind of doctrine. Now that was already happening in the Ephesian church age. Paul admitted it was happening in the uh, Corinthian church. He said, I've got my suspicions and I believe I'm right. That you are no longer a virgin of the word and unto Christ, but you've already been deceived. In other words, you are a philanderer concerning the word of Almighty God. <clears throat> Not carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men. And cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love. But let's go to 2 Corinthians. <clears throat> Just hold your finger there and get back to 2 Corinthians, the, second, the third, fourth chapter. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have re received mercy, we faint not, which is to bring the glory of God to the people, to see the literal glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, which is Acts 3. Yeah. But notice, but having renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, not handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience, sight of God. He's telling you that he's absolutely vindicated and he has not given anybody anything but the perfect revealed word of Almighty God. <clears throat> yeah. So therefore, this is unique here. But holding the truth and love may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies according to the effectual working in the measure of every part make an increase of the body on the edifying of itself and love. Now that's a true fivefold ministry. That's what they can do. That's what they're supposed to do. And that's what they do. <clears throat> now you may look around and say, well, I just don't think I'm seeing that done. Well, they're smarter than God. Why don't you go home and eat a big feast and drop dead? You're going to get killed anyway. You ain't got a prayer because you've got your own idea. You've got to put your trust somewhere. And the trust must be in a vindicated one. Amen. Now, Paul was vindicated. <clears throat> and the church started that way. The church got off a track. But remember, the oil and the wine was never lost to the church. They always had what life was there in the church. Now, look, you can have a full-grown, full-developed life, but it comes with a little tiny cell. <clears throat> Hardly see with the microscope. And it's the same life that's in the vast body. So when they had the vast element of truth in Paul's day, it didn't matter if that light went down and down as long as they had some light. Because that's all you need. You could take a sperm back right now. <clears throat> and you could take and freeze the sperm. And that sperm may last for a thousand years for all I know. Bring it out under the right conditions, the light never departed from it. You can take grain that was found in the pharaoh's uh, pyramids and, and, the, and the granaries back there that are in, the, in rock in Egypt. 3,000 years later, what do you find? There's life in the wheat. <clears throat> so you're talking here of a five-fold ministry that has been commissioned and ordained of God to see the church through. Not that any man himself can do it, but there's a word there. Yeah. And this will bring about the rapture. Now, I'm not going to take time, but you read Romans 12, and you read especially 1 Corinthians 12, and even 14. <clears throat> you will find there a bunch of gifts in a bunch of people that destroy the church, and they can never bring the church anywhere. Amen. So that's what he's talking about. <clears throat> now, remember, this scripture quoted here, this is a quoting of scripture. He led captivity, captive and captive, and gave gifts unto men. We go back to Psalm 68 again, because I'm, I'm, I'm not belaboring this point <clears throat> for the fun of it. I want to show you these things, but this sermon's all about. Verse 18, thou hast descended on high. Thou hast led captivity, captive. Thou hast received gifts for men. Notice, yea, for the rebellious also, that the Lord might dwell among them. <clears throat> He's telling you right there, that the time of God dwelling amongst men, there's a five-fold ministry, and there's a bunch of gifts given to people that are in rebellion. <clears throat> what are they in rebellion to? They're in rebellion to the Lord. How are they in rebellion to the Lord? There's only one way they can be in rebellion, and that's against His will. And what is His will? It's the revealed Word of God. Amen. So there you see the whole thing lined up. <clears throat> that's what Brother Branham was talking about here. He's not talking about a phony five-fold ministry, though God knows there is a phony five-fold. 
There's phony, there's false apostles, there's false prophets, there's false teachers, there's false evangelists, there's false pastors, there's false elders, there's false deacons. <clears throat> there's a false church that's headed up by this Antichrist himself that's on the scene right now. Denominations have taken over. But this is in particular, and he's referring to a time of prophets, a an hour. <clears throat> now, he said, God, many times God will give a man a gift. <clears throat> Doesn't say God gave the church a gift. He said God gave a man a gift. Amen. Apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors are literal gifts to the church. <clears throat> Those men will not make mistakes. How can they make mistakes when it says they're going to bring you up unto Christ? <clears throat> now they can have some error, but those errors will be corrected in the light of what God has in that season. <clears throat> Just like a kid going through high school, going through school to high school, university. He starts with basic understanding. He takes the same understanding all the way through. If it's a true understanding, only it's embellished. <clears throat> a little light in the seed. You can't see much, but it grows into a giant tree for all we know, the acorn. That's that one little bit of life in there. See what it'll do? So, he says here, God will give a gift to a certain person. And if they're not perfectly called and sent of God, in their, in, in, with this, they can be in a five-fold ministry. Now, if they're not part of that true ministry, <clears throat> they can blow it. They can ruin it. The whole thing can go. Now, that's true. You know that. It starts with the elders and the deacons. Always has and always will. You see? Okay. Because they're the ones that rise up. That's a congregation. One thing the congregation's got to be very careful about ever rising up. Because that's the first sign that you're right, you're going down the hill. Now, Brother Brandon said, if you're not satisfied with your pastor, get yourself another one. But it's very dangerous, very, very dangerous. Because you may be coming against the will of God in a man <clears throat> that is absolutely of God. He ministered perfectly to God, but he doesn't agree with you. And you say, Well, that's that's too bad. I I'm gonna fight that. Well, you see what could happen. You'll be destroyed. Amen. Because there's something about this that you and I don't have a control over. I've tried to explain time after time. Your brother Branham tried time after time. And all you do is get in trouble with yourself, with God and the people. They don't respect you one ounce more for trying to explain things. And I've done more than my share of trying to explain how a gift operates. I can't do it. There's no way. <clears throat> There's just no way. There's no end or high heaven you can tell anybody how it is. You just know something. Well, how, do you tell, how does an artist explain how he can wield a piece of chalk or a crayon or, or a pen and, or a paintbrush? Now, you may learn to have a tiny bit of skill with it, but you'll never do it the artist that you can't do it. <clears throat> there's no way. So there's when you're looking at this, you've got to divide the two and understand how it is. As Brother Branham said, God has set gifts in the church, that's gifts of the Holy Ghost, and there's many, many of them to be complementary to what is given by a fivefold ministry. <clears throat> and if the church understood that, it would have been fine, but in Brother Branham's own church, what did they do? He couldn't make them sit down and shut up. He had to jump up every time and destroy every single service he had. <clears throat> time of the altar call, the most important. He jumped up and screamed and ruined an altar call. Yeah. And finally, he finally set a woman down, and everybody got mad. Mm -hmm. Not everybody, but most of them got mad. My wife thought she'd be helpful in a meeting in New York one time where a black girl got over enthused and God knew what spirit she had, but she literally threw herself over people sitting in benches, chairs. Land of the house. And the wife said, Now you better quiet down. People got mad at her for quieting her down. Uh, people got mad at me because I let people out of meeting but wouldn't stop talking and gibbering and jabbering. People got mad at me. Brother Brandon congratulated me and thanked me. Right, so did God. Yeah. I was really doing God a service. Yeah. Right in his will, too. <clears throat> well, he said, well, that's not the will of God. See, you know, so he's talking to Pentecostals. You can't talk to Pentecostals because they will not, you can't apply anything to their heads. <clears throat> it's all feeling, 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 feeling. Now, if that isn't sex, you tell me who it is. Now, I'm hitting it right hard here because that's what it's all about. If people apply their head, they put their feelings where it belongs, which is the marriage ceremony in the marriage, not run around with a bunch of prostitutes. That shows the church is condemned in a prostitute church. Amen. Look, there isn't a type. There's not one thing, brother, sister, comes to our attention in the heavens, this earth, politics, you and the church, you name it, the types this plan this hour perfectly. Amen. You tell me I'm wrong. You don't talk, but I do. So I don't think I like the way you talk. That's fine to me. Nobody has to like the way. I don't care two cents. <clears throat> when this pulpit, I get out of the pulpit, then I might repent. No, I won't. Be right back doing the same thing. Because he 
tell you, if they're not perfectly called to send to God, he'll cause, listen, he'll cause that man or woman to say something that isn't his will. Because the people push on them, pull on them. <clears throat> now listen, these people he's talking about are nice people. They're good people. They're not in the bar room. They're not down <clears throat> in the gambling joint. They're not smoking hashish or anything else like that. They're trying to be fine citizens. They're trying to do something in the kingdom. Some little thing's been given to them. And I'll tell you, pride could have crept in, I don't know, as well as just trying to help people. And when you try to help people and you're not called to, then that to me is a type of pride too. <clears throat> and turning where they don't belong, then you try to help the people and do things. Well, we got so bad down in our church, Pentecostal Church in Florida, we had a woman running around and she said she was really ordained to God. She knew she had a calling to help preachers. Oh, female Holy Ghost. God have pity. Bad enough for man, but a woman running around. <clears throat> Poor thing a million miles out of the word, didn't he know? Tried to tell him, well, Brother Bill, the trouble is, <clears throat> the people fuss over the word. We, we just need Jesus. Drop the word. I said, that's where you're wrong, sister. You drop the word, you drop Jesus. Yeah. Where did the church go wrong? Went off the word. See? Mm -hmm. At the end time, the church is wretched, miserable, blind, naked. It says we're rich, increased in goods, and don't lack a thing. How far off beat is the church in this hour? You say, well, that's, that's for another age. That's coming up. I'm afraid you're wrong. It's for this age. <clears throat> People push on them. I had to catch your little pastor on it here. Out in the woods one morning, 3 o'clock morning, go tell Brother Nabal. I came to you, didn't I, Brother Nabal? Everybody said, Brother Nabal, prophesy, prophesy to me. Tell me this or that. You'd have him saying things that wouldn't come to pass. Why? Because he talked out of his heart when you push him. Sure. Though the secret is, they that wait to find out what the Lord wants to do, and they're the ones that have the right to talk. Now, dealing with individuals like this <clears throat> is not all there is to being a prophet. You better have a whole lot more than that, see? Okay. So these men looked upon it. Here's where we start reading now. So this is the new material. So these men looked upon it in the natural sense. It belongs to us. Now, the natural sense of reading said, yes, it belongs to us. But you see, they didn't find the word and will of God. Now, what happened? <clears throat> they didn't read the whole Bible. They just took a part of it. Had they read the rest of the word, they would have found out that God said, you betray me in your idolatries. And Ahab was a confirmed idolater and married to one. Literally, he had, <clears throat> had hybridized the Hebrew religion and brought it to a very low ebb by allowing all kinds of sacrifices. They even instituted a worship apart from Jerusalem so that people wouldn't go up there three times a year and come back to truth. They organized. He didn't read where it says, now listen, you get into idolatry, I'll desert you and the land will go back. No, they didn't bother reading that. <clears throat> they didn't bother reading where it says, you, like Solomon reached his hand toward heaven and he prayed way before this fella and he said, now Lord, if we depart from your word, bring us back to your word. Let us help us to repent and come back so the blessing of God's upon us. No, they didn't take that part of it. And neither does Pentecost take anything but what they want. And the churches today, see. <clears throat> no, they wouldn't do that. No way, shape, and form. Then Micaiah came down and he had a vision. He didn't want to be good old boys. He didn't like him though. And he examined first you notice he said, wait, give me tonight. Let me find out tomorrow, maybe I can answer you. He wasn't right quick with thus said the Lord, like in agreeing with the other prophets. He said, only speak what God said. In other words, too many people glibly quote the Bible. You don't, ex listen, never expect the prophet to glibly quote the Bible. Yeah. He doesn't even have to quote the Bible. The word of the Lord comes to the prophet, and what he says will be the Bible. Amen. <clears throat> Like I told his brother there in Canada, hell, he said, trouble with you, Brother Ratzkevi, is that you, you, you take, you told Brother Brown's little, like this here in the, in the book form, he said, you take this and make it equal this. Oh, he said, not sure I do. What'd you expect? <laughs> <clears throat> what are you supposed to do? You believe in a prophet? Well, come on, that, that's the whole, that's the whole thing. Amen. That's what Brother Brown would say. He said, you believe in prophets? What are you talking about? <clears throat> How's it supposed to do here? He didn't just say, well, hey, that is the word, all right. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and act on it. No. Now, Micaiah was not against the need of the hour. Now, let's understand that. 
He accepted the evident fact with all the other fundamentalists. He accepted it. It belonged to God gave it Israel. And the Philistines had it. But he didn't draw any conclusions by saying, we'll just go take it back. <clears throat> you know, a doctor looks at you and he's got all these, you've got all these symptoms. What's the first thing he does? He said, let's find out what caused it. Did these Hebrew prophets? No. What's behind it? People didn't ask Jesus, what's behind you, fellow? <clears throat> Did he ask Brother Branham, what's behind you, fellow? Did they say to my client, what's behind you, fellow? Now, that's not a bad term because Jesus is exalted above his fellows. So he said, I'm on Bible Branham. Don't think I'm, I'm not being facetious and I'm not being disrespectful. <clears throat> the Bible uses it. But he could not endorse their scriptural understanding of what was to be done about it. He examined his own role in that situation, lest he sin against God, or be found trying to annul the will of God, even as Balaam did. Because <clears throat> Balaam said, let's go curse him. Let's go curse him. Let's get numbered. And he came back and said, how can I curse what God is blessed? My brother Brad said, how can I take off you what God could have put on you? <clears throat> Wouldn't that be great? Prophet going by taking God, putting things on to get people lined up or letting the devil do it or something happen. Then the prophet, chip, chip, take them off. And God would say, who's running this show, you or me? Yeah. Amen. Well, who can talk their way to God? <clears throat> I'm running the show, Lord. Now, come on, examine your own heart. You know if you had a gift or something, that's the first thing you'd do. That's sure the first thing I did, and carried that flat. <clears throat> if I had a gift or not, but I sure worked hard at helping people get, get healed and everything else. And the more I went to the Word, the less the less people got. Because you know why? They wouldn't believe the Word. They'd put their faith in everything else. You know, you can put your faith in a lot of things, and you can get results from God. And the Bible said you get leanness of soul. <clears throat> you talk about lean people. See, God doesn't want that. And the next day we find out God told him what would happen. It was absolutely contrary to the others. The whole, to the whole school it was contrary. And even one of them walked up and smacked him in the face. Good old Cain. You can tell just where he came from. Good old Cain. <clears throat> Say, let's bless God. We're worshiping too. Don't think we haven't prophesied. And look, we've got the word. How come you come against this word here? It's the very word you say you're a prophet of God. You think people like Brother Bramley when he down women preachers? <clears throat> oh, my, listen, you can, we can find women deaconesses and everything else in the Bible. Just look hard. And, oh, you can find it all there. No problem at all. Flaming evangelists. Oh, yeah. Apostles. Yeah, yeah. Prophetess. Oh, yeah. You can find them all there. You can find anything you're looking for. Be my guest. Right. Yeah. How are they looking for this? Yeah. I guess if this were going to be some vindicate. Yeah. But see, he waited. <clears throat> and then when he did that, Having waited, got a vision. He compared his prophecy, his vision with the written word, and it was right with the word. <clears throat> sure it was right with the word. How was it right with the word? Number one, he knew. It was a, <clears throat> a, a, a judgment of God. Number two, he knew that Elijah had promised the blood of Ahab had to be licked up by the dogs. And he knew this was the hour. And he said, if you ever if you come again, he said, I am a false prophet. <clears throat> you know something? You know, Brother Branham one day stood, and I heard him. He said, if God told me to go beside the grave of Abraham Lincoln and raise him from the dead, I would challenge the whole world to come with their guns and shoot me down if I couldn't do it. Praise the Lord. Do you know that is insane? That is insane unless, unless, you are linked up with omnipotence. Right. Yeah. That doesn't take intestinal fortitude to say a thing like that. It goes beyond courage. It goes beyond strength. It goes beyond anything. It goes right to God. You realize he said that? <clears throat> God didn't put any man to the test. They say, well, Brother Branham, what about the fact you know that uh, Brother Branham didn't know anything? He just said, look, he said, 
If God said it, I'd stand there. You could shoot me down. Now, what if he'd gotten hallucination? He just stood there and he could have shot him down. He didn't get any command to do, but he put, he put himself where he could get a commandment. <clears throat> okay. When somebody says he's got a revelation to baptize people in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, that's contrary to the word. None of the rest of them ever did it. When they say, oh, we're going to stand this, that, and the other, and so forth, that, that, that's contrary to the word. When they say they don't believe in serpent seed, that's contrary to the word. All these other things that's contrary to the word. Now, will you notice he's defending his doctrine, and he is proving to the people like Elijah did. It must be with the word and at the season. Now, if David would have only done that, <clears throat> one, the ark was coming, two, but not at that time, three, there was no place for it. Now, this is a simple illustration that even how these work, how it didn't work, how it's supposed to work. See? All right, let's read. Notice now, when they went down to get the ark, all the dignitaries said, that's the thing to do, David. Glory to God. We need a revival. And that is real Pentecost today, and Baptist and Presbyterian. David, you're our king. Captain so-and-so, and major so-and-so, and general so-and-so will be at your meeting. Why? They say that's just the thing to do, David. You've got the whole country with you. That's what's the matter today. I don't want the country. I want God if there's nobody else stands. Now watch. Ecumenism of believers in state and religion will become one if there is a common cause that is strong enough or urgent enough. You know, people can even get together over the United Fund to help people that are indigent. Everybody gets together. <clears throat> They've already got the groundwork set up. Protestants and Catholics all alike have things worked out, and the government's got it set up the same way, turning things over to the church more and more. And if there's a real common, urgent cause, you can surely get people together. Now, that's human nature. And you've got it right here. Well-meaning people will mistake what's going on in the land today, which is ecumenism, which is going to bring us right to destruction because God is going to judge that prostitute church. He said, I don't want the country. I want God if there's nobody else stands. Now, standing with his office as a true prophet is what he did. And he defied ecumenism. <clears throat> David had all the captains. He had cooperation with the military forces. Cooperation with all the denominations, all the theologians, everybody agreeing with him. So did Ahab. <clears throat> Pardon me, others in Scripture. But he didn't have God because he was out of the will of God. Now remember, the cry came out, who is on the Lord's side, not whose side is God on? That makes a video. I'm going to tell you whose side God's on. God's on the man's side who's on his side. You listen to the word. <coughs> Who is God? Now listen, if, we're, if, our, if our premise is right in this church that we teach, and this teaching goes many, many places around the world, if our premise is right, in standing with William Branham, we're standing against the world, as it was in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Lot. And people can say what they want. It has got to be a minority for how can the whole world come to God in a vast revival at the same time the Antichrist takes it there? I'd like to see people in heaven and hell at the same time. You know what they're really doing? In faith, they're making God and the devil the same person. Because the devil has told them this big thing. And God has said small thing. <clears throat> and they're taking it from one word that God wrote. So they got God and the devil the same person. Literally. Then it boils down to where their God is the devil. Yeah. Because they're listening to him. <coughs> Certainly that's how it's going to go. He said, I hope we get this. So therefore there is a, a right division, there's a wrong division. Rome did this and, there, and people are still doing it right today. All the big cooperation. Trying to get together as though the world can do something about it. And we're the speck of bird.
unispeckle birders, of course, is that one the blood spattered on was different from all the others. Notice, they did every religious thing they could. <clears throat> now watch this. See, look, I've been through this many times as a minister, I've watched it from the outside, looking in, and uh, thank God they were able to join that bunch. Because, you see, they didn't think that we should be able to win souls because we were little independent Pentecostals. They were big Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian. Hot dog. <laughs> we didn't have much, and they had less than we did. They did everything religious thing they could. They probably put out advertisements and everything. Oh, we always have. Great revival. The ark is going to be brought back. We're going to have revival. We're going to do this. <clears throat> Never changed. Notice, David sent singers. He sent people with harps, with trumpets. And they did every religious thing they knew how to do. Still, God was not in it. Some, somewhat, see it repeating again, don't we? In other words, they have professional talent, very good singers, great composers, and uh, that's going to draw the crowds. You know, Finney wrote a book, which was fine in his day, but it never was really right. He wrote a book, <clears throat> How That You Could Have Revival, period. <clears throat> Revive thy works in the midst of the years, O Lord, is what he said. The text of his great book. And he laid it out, systematically, being a lawyer theologian, a great expert in his field, one of the greatest men, I admire him. He'd never fit in this age. He'd fit in that age for every face of man. He laid it out in his masterpiece called Revival. I think I still got a copy of his own. <clears throat> and it'll tell you exactly how to go about to get a revival. <clears throat> and the great secret, of course, is to pray. Like Moses went down to Egypt and prayed for Pharaoh. That's how you do it. Get a revival. Get the big guys. <clears throat> get them all. Oh, yes, that's all we need. Just a few and the rest will fall on. Because you see, God works in a predestinated manner. He takes a couple of predestinated and they set the key in the tenor and the rest come in. Hallelujah. You got a hogwash. Amen. Everybody's predestinated. Nobody's predestinated. Right. Everybody's foreign or nobody's foreign. Right. What these fellows don't realize is that everybody's foreign on, <coughs> elected, <coughs> predestinated to his exact position, which was before the foundation of the world. In the mind of Almighty God. And let me tell you, furthermore, it was already in the life of God. And the church, therefore, is the genes of God. Yeah. And we're all part of him in that respect. <clears throat> Just giving yeah. bodies to us. Yeah. So Finney's revival wouldn't go too great. And this would be the answer to um, us today. When Brother Branham says, I don't pray for America anymore. Didn't say he wouldn't pray for people. Didn't pray for America. She's gone over the hill. They took all the singers. They took the harpists. They took the trumpeters. They took women, men, whoever it was that sang. They took them all down there. And they went through every religious motion. I don't want to say this, but I've got to say it. So are these denominations today, Pentecostal and all, are going through every religious motion of singing and shouting instead of waiting on the Lord to know. <clears throat> Brother yeah. Paul Berg's a very good friend of mine, and one of my dearest friends, and, my, and one of my most respected friends. What do you think a lot of him? Uh, when it was approached him that he might possibly go to, it, to Toronto to Edmonton and see what the people thought of him and what he thought of the people, he already knew he was going there. Whether they wanted him or not, he was going to sit there because he knew God wanted him. He already talked to God and knew the price he should put on his house. <clears throat> when the real estate man was called, he said, Reverend Paul, but you'll never get that because houses aren't getting that. He said, I'll get it. Just put it on the market that price. And he got it. His wife said, well, we're doing these things. What about it? He said, where are we going to stay? What's this? He said, I'll fly to Toronto and get a place. He was there 48 hours and had the exact place. And he's in a position right now to double what his house cost, or he could add to it and sit in one of the best places in all of Ontario in that area have literally a palace in the sense that he wanted to add to it and all. What he's going to do is his business, whatever he does. But he knew. And the church loved him. He'd been there, I guess, seven years. It's <clears throat> been a real, real wonderful thing. The other day, they've been trying to get a church. And they've got this bit of property. He felt that they should get this property. And they found out the property was not zoned right. One day in praying, got the mind of the Lord. The Lord said, see, go on down and check the people in the middle. 
He went down there, and the guy said, oh, I'm glad you came. He said, that property has been rezoned. He said, we don't know what all it will be used for, but I'm quite sure you can have it for church. So now they're going to look around, and they'll be able to get it. <clears throat> so he's just going ahead, you see? And now that that's not the officer prophet. That's just those, those that wait upon the Lord. See, they get these things. But it seems to me that people in this position here that say they want revival have already made their minds up what they're going to do because they feel from the word they know what they're going to do. They're determined to do it. And now they say, Lord, send your spirit. Hallelujah. They're going to really do it. You know, you know that, what that's like? <clears throat> that's like you knowing that old John D. has been dead a long time now. Rockefeller. He's got all this money. And people did it to him. They did it to the Turno. They'll do it to anybody that's got a buck. And they know he's got a buck and he's generous. Well, no, John D. was never generous. The Turno was generous. And I've got this great plan, Brother Laterno. All I want now is your money. He said, uh, my money? You said, my money, didn't you? Oh, you did, you know, it's your money. Well, I think maybe I ought to have an idea that I should do with my money, not you. I guess he told him that, too, the guy. He'd be pretty ouchy. A lady went by one time with her visions of grandeur for his money, and he just about threw her out. I thought, well, it wasn't nice, but now I'm very hilarious over it. <laughs> and I get a kick out of it, John. He was right. Yeah. Yes, sir. Like people that drink, they can drink any given quantity. Going through all the religious motions. Now, planned revival with every precept found, found in the Bible won't do it in this hour. <clears throat> You won't do it. I'll tell you why. Because what's in this Bible, God himself has to do, and you go along and enjoy it. Amen. <clears throat> Listen to what it says in the third chapter of the book of Acts. I've read this dozens of times. Middle of the 19th verse. My books there should be a period there. When times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. That's like a face-to-face -face confrontation. And even he shall send Jesus Christ, which was proclaimed and advanced unto you. He was proclaimed in advance. Who did it? Uh, the angel. Yep. And then, when he was there, the shepherds and Simeon and Anna. <clears throat> Whom the heavens must retain until the restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all these holy prophets of the world began. Now, it tells you right here that there's going to be a revival come all right, but it's going to take the presence of the Lord to do, which is the appearing, which precedes the coming. <clears throat> That's your revival. And they turned it down flat. And that was in the Word as everything else is in the Word, but God's got to do it. Yeah. And things like this cannot happen unless there be a prophet, because Amos said so. Amen. See? <clears throat> That's what you're looking at. Notice, David shouted with all his might. He screamed, he jumped, he went through every religious motion, and he did too. And, and that there could be, and still God was not in it. Now listen, let's get this plan. This is not just an illustration. <clears throat> this is the truth. God wasn't in it. Amen. Yeah. Everything he was doing was, was good motive, good, good incentive, good everything. His purpose and all these things was fine. It was right there in the Bible, but it wasn't in the Bible. Not that was in the Bible. Not the way he did it. No, sir. <clears throat> his motive, his objective, everything was right, but he went the wrong way to do it. See? He performed all the religious movements, promotions, shouted, sang, had special singers, special shouters, everything else. They danced in the spirit. They did everything as religious. Now, therefore, I'm going to say this. Even if it is in the word and suits your position, watch out. You gotta watch out. <clears throat> because this is not page eight. Paragraphs thirty-three and thirty-four. Where Brother Brandon said here about Brother Bear quickly praying for his little boy because the child got hurt and he recovered. Or the little lady, wife of a minister. The doctors gave her up to die. She'd be paralyzed all her life with a burst of spine. But they prayed, and God healed her. 
Now, you can always do something quick about those things. <clears throat> you never need to worry. Just jump right in and do your best to believe God. Because anybody could do that. I, like I like what Spurgeon said. He said, it is my job to believe God for the impossible and leave the results up to him. And I found that in any ministry, that's a very successful thing to do. In other words, you're not trying to lead the, the cart. You're just simply standing by the cart in case God should do something. <clears throat> it's something like our crusades of our time. They wanted to will, win the world to Christ. Now watch, he's bringing out for this hour. There is no such thing as winning the world to Christ in this hour. Great landslide revivals, great things happening. If they could only realize that day has passed, she's doomed. But they're building crusades, organizations, and everything. But the result is just about like it was in David's time. <clears throat> it didn't work. That's why Billy Graham says the wells run dry. Amen. Your brother Branham beat him to that. What, 22 solid years, at least. Yeah. Amen. He's have crisscrossed this nation. It's all sained out. Maybe one or two there. 50 came to the altar. How many got saved? No one has an idea. What they're doing is confusing this age with the Wesleyan age of the pollen. <clears throat> the scattering of the seed. <clears throat> but there's no life in it anymore. <clears throat> Look, when the word of God is fulfilled, the life moves on. The light from Philadelphia moved into Laodicea. It died in Laodicea, and it went now to the sea. <clears throat> it's right back to the original form. We're back to Ephesus again. We're back to the perfect ministry of Christ on earth that started the whole thing. What started this whole thing? The ministry of Christ, not his preaching, his ministry. He began to do and to teach. He explained what he did and why he did it. Now you're right back to it. <clears throat> the ministry. See? Prove the capstone. Prove the headstone in spirit form. Proving the authenticity of the revelation. The hour in which we live. You're right back. <clears throat> you're past those ages. Nothing will work but this. Nothing outside this message will come to life. People can say what they want. I know we're not trying to be hard on anybody. Look. Noah couldn't help building an ark. What are we supposed to do? Cut our throats and bleed with the rest of them? I thought Noah said, Now, Lord, just hold up, hold up, hold up. I will not build an ark, even if it means saving me and my family. I'll die with him. <clears throat> well, 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 well. That wasn't what Noah said. Amen. Noah just built the ark. He's supposed to build the ark. Preached 120 years or so. What more do you want from the fellow? You, you, can't, you can't do more than that. See? We go and have revival. Some are great advances. They say they have 30,000 copies of Billy Graham he's talking about in six weeks. Nothing wrong with Billy, Billy Graham. He just doesn't understand because it's not he didn't understand. And here from there, now they go back, they can't find 30. Something's wrong. What is it? It's just the same thing David did. Great dignitaries, great men, great preachers, greater schools, great authority, but still they're consulting an old denomination instead of looking in the face of God's Word and seeing when the, when the season's on. You can't raise certain foods but certain times a year. <clears throat> so you see, evidently there's nothing in what they're saying to promote the health and the welfare. In fact, what they are doing, those that appear the most sincere, are those that will fight this the hardest. Because yeah. <clears throat> they don't tell me I know. What do you know from? Your experience? Oh, boy. Yeah. That's the flattest thing I ever heard. I can take a hinder and knock the spots. Every single person you always put together. Rolled in one. I'll never touch a real consecrated hinder to really show you love. <clears throat> you haven't raised your kids. What a hinder raises his kid. The kid that comes, mother's mother said, now go down and, and get a loaf of bread. The kid, there's no money. So he doesn't say, there's no, there's no money, mother. I can't get rid. He said, mother, I will get the bread when the money comes. He puts the aspect on knowing the money's going to come. He's going to get a loaf of bread. Everything is positive over there. Everything is in love. <clears throat> You've heard a lot of the, the bad side of them. <clears throat> That's true. Everybody's got a bad side. But you get on the good side. <clears throat> I can tell you the truth. I know to a minister, one of my dearest friends went over to India and another friend of his, uh, an associate, not a minister, but an associate of the man, when they came back, they were converted away from Christianity, both have spoken in tongues, and preached the glorious gospel, the blood and everything else, and then flimmed out of the whole thing, because they couldn't stand up. 
when they saw something. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you, brothers, you better see what the Scripture says you're to see. And have a revelation of Scripture about that. I'm not, I'm not championing the lack of love or anything. God, you people know me better than that. <clears throat> I told you, and I God says, tell everything. I spill my guts. If, wherever I go, I tag the breath. That's the greatest thing. I belong for all. I'm going to be gentle, kind, sweet. To be just what I know Christ would have us to be in that order. But I'm going to tell you something. It's not ordained that I'm that kind of a guy. But I never preach like this. No way. Yeah. My heart can bleed because I'm not as nice as I should be. But there's no way I can change what I am. It's just, that's all there is to it. I'll die this way. But I, but I will not die a liar. And you'll never say I skinned or did a thing to you. I might not have helped you too much. But if anything can help, this word's going to help because I can't do it. <clears throat> no prophet, nobody can do it. Come and tell you. The conduit of the Holy Spirit is that word. And from there on, you are the conduit. And I don't care how you get that word, brother, sister. People just pick up a book was written. Brother Brandon's message, they can get it. Certain food for just certain times of the year. <clears throat> so what is the food of this hour? The food of this hour is Malachi chapter 4. Amen. Okay. Immortality food is for this hour. To eat and live forever. To take of the tree of life. To stretch forth your hand. Lest he stretch forth his hand and take of the tree of life. What are we going to do today? Let's go to Philippians. <clears throat> Let's read it. Philippians. The third chapter. Paul says that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. You know what? Paul could not know it. <clears throat> he had to die. <clears throat> he will know it when he's raised. You and I are different. We're here to know it. Right? Ephesians 1, right? 17 to 23. Amen. And the fellowship of his sufferings, which is rejection. Being made conformable <clears throat> unto his death. <clears throat> Which shows if you accept his death, for the resurrection, go all the way. Now watch. If by any means I might attain to the out-resurrection from among the dead, the very hour you and I are in. Now I'm going to show you. He's stretching forth his hands to the tree of life. How do you do it? Not as though I had already attained. Either were already perfect, finished off and ready for it. But I follow after. If I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ. You've been apprehended of God for this hour, set here to be immortal. <clears throat> a part of the bride. Now watch. Brethren, I count myself not to have apprehended. But this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. What you came out of. And reaching forth, stretching to the tree of life. You cannot stretch forth your hand long as there's these veils upon your minds and your hearts and denominationals. Yeah. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter. <clears throat> Third chapter. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, a loosing, a jubilee. See? Freedom. But we all with open faces. <clears throat> now that's jubilee. Beholding as in the glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image, from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. It's going to take a man like Paul <coughs> to do this. See, you follow me now. Let's understand what we're talking about. Not walking in craftiness, handing the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth that this is it, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Now he said, brethren, <coughs> I count not myself to obtain and apprehend it. But this one thing, forgetting those things which are behind, every creed and dogma, everything he ever taught, and reaching forth unto those things which are before me, <coughs> which is what? The word in season for the hour. Yeah. See? Yeah. The stretching forth is reading the mind. <coughs> Getting rid of every creed and dogma. All unbelief and anything associated with unbelief, all disbelief, which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. What's the high calling of God? The one that's the top one. <clears throat> what was the top one for him? Resurrection. <clears throat> of which he said, if there's no resurrection, I am of all men most miserable. And Brother Branham says he does all three in descending, shout, voice, trumpet. The shout is the message, the gathering together unto Christ, so you can press into the tree of life and receive. The stretching forth your hand 
<clears throat> the constant stretching forth is a constant disapplication, the cutting off of what you used to know until you can perfectly think with the Word of God as revealed the Word of God, not what the denominations talk because there's death in it. <clears throat> if I am wrong in my premise of what I teach, I'm a billion times closer than the rest of them yeah. because at least I'm not teaching anything the way they're teaching it. Hallelujah. That gives me that much consolation. I'm at least somewhere on the road trying to get the glory. But you teach all this old hogwash about the appearing and coming and all that stuff, you're no more near this, the tree of life, or nothing than what I read in the book here. <clears throat> I've got to go by the book. Oh, sure. I, mean, I, could, I could exercise my senses and jump up and down. In fact, I've got a little... Um, what do you call a little trampoline in my house here? <clears throat> I could bring it to church and I could maybe excel all of you by jumping in the air. <clears throat> I don't think I'd last as long as the rest of you, though. No, it's not you. It's not you. It, listen, shouting and, and, and vim and vigor isn't, doesn't constitute authority. The authority has been established. Amen. Yeah. See? Okay, let's see what happened. Though their religious emotion, this stuff was great, their intentions great, their crusade great, their singing great, their dancing great, their shouting great, their music great, and they had the ark. What good's the ark without God? It's just a wooden box, a couple of tables of stone. What good is the Bible unless it's revealed? <clears throat> I'll tell you, it's not good. It's a, the authority of condemnation. Yeah. You're in jeopardy. That's like taking communion, being baptized. What good is it do to be baptized if you haven't repented first? What, what good does it do me to take communion, become a hypocrite, if you don't live the life and believe the rest of God's word? Take part of it and not the rest of it shows there's something wrong. See, that's what David did. <clears throat> now, this sounds as if every age and season had to have a prophet. <clears throat> that isn't so. You only have to have a prophet when a prophet's required. <clears throat> That's at this hour. Because a prophet has to open the seals. Now, people don't want to even believe that. And they say they're fundamentalists. You say, what about those seals? What about those thunders? Oh, well, you know, just no, well, 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 well. <clears throat> well, I tell you one thing you're saying, if anybody's going to do it, our church is going to do it. Or they'll come to our church. Always it's the same old gimme. <clears throat> you know something? I never expect anything to come to me. <clears throat> I was on the receiving end. I didn't expect anything to come. I just, but God helped me to know what I saw. Same with you. Amen. Let us now see what happens when God in his age at his time is not considered just people's ideas. When God's age and his time. Okay. Many people have said to me, talking about himself, why don't you want to hold a meeting here? Well, we call for you. Sign this or that or the other. Wait, you might want it, but what does God say about it? Many people have called me and said, <clears throat> I've uh, <clears throat> had an invitation I've been interviewed, first interviews and things, and I waited even a whole year for that. Wait, how will I know what to say until God tells me what to say? See, got to wait. That's the reason I said, write that out and let me see what he says. See, wait, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Is that right? <clears throat> now, in other words, the prophet is giving an example of his ministry, how he has got to operate. And that is not how you and I operated except in the trickle-down <clears throat> economy of God. We must wait on ourselves to receive leading. But this man is talking of receiving a leading which concerns vitally the kingdom of God and the subjects therein. And at that time also, those who have not yet found their identity are part of the kingdom and they might come in. <clears throat> so this is very responsible. A very great thing that a person should do. Like Brother Brown said, look, he said, I could go any place and preach. And he said, I've done that. And he said, because I preach, God blesses to a degree. But he said, oh, he said, if I go and I know I'm to go, then let the devil do what he wants. Right. There's nothing can stop that. Yeah. And I tell you, I know nothing about those things like I ought to know any more than you do. And I know this one thing. When I know that I hear from God, it works every single time. There's no time it doesn't work. It always comes to pass exactly as he said. <clears throat> you see, now listen. <clears throat> There's room for the trickle-down ministry in every single one of us because every one of us has a ministry whether we believe it or not. <clears throat> now, I tell you, when you get in trouble, a lot of people in the churches, they get all mixed up in ministries. They still will not believe he, Romans, the 12th chapter. Now, we're taking our time as we always do and we'll get through in 40 lessons instead of 10 lessons like you ought to get through. But <clears throat> we just can't help ourselves. I can't help myself. So you're stuck because you, you're here with me. Okay, listen to Paul. Romans, the 12th chapter. This is for the whole church. 
For I say through the grace given unto me, first, third, third verse, to every unto, unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more high than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Now it tells you everybody has a measure of faith. Whether that faith is the identical measure, <clears throat> I don't know for sure. But I do know everybody does have to begin with an identical measure of faith. That gives us the power of revelation. So, okay, this could be a measure to a ministry. Four, as we have many members in one body and all members have not the same office. My hand is not the same as my foot, my eyes not the same as my ear. So we being many are one body in Christ, and every one member is one of another. We all work together. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. <clears throat> so therefore, to prophesy will take a whole lot more faith than to speak in tongues. And to interpret the message in tongues takes a whole lot more faith than to speak in the tongue. So there's a difference in your faith geared, whether it's a big faith or little faith, or little faith used greatly, because Jesus said, though I have the faith of a grain of mustard seed, I can move a mountain, and Paul said, they've got all faith, I can move a mountain. So big faith and little faith is really the same thing in action. But there is a difference. <clears throat> we see it here. Okay. Or minister in way in ministry. He that teaches on teaching. He that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth. Now that's an absolute ministry with simplicity. But don't stand around waiting for somebody to give you things. Who in our church has a gift of ministry? Ah, how's that man that could tend that gift? No, you don't do that. <clears throat> oh, you don't hint. And you don't, don't go to someone because you think you're drowning. Get him to drown with you because he can't turn you down. That's right. Amen. I'll tell you something. Being very sincere and very sober. You've got a real problem. Don't get anybody else involved. Now, if he wants to get involved, it may be all right because he wants to help you. See, I told you 30 years ago, I've tried to pull a gimmick and I learned my lesson. You don't give it, period. One nice, easy lesson. How many preachers to tell you that? Outside of me and Brother Branham, one or two, Jack Bell. Oh, yeah, I can name a few. Paul Burt. <coughs> tell you the honest truth. You're going to know it on Judgment Day. I'm beating you to it. So therefore, Judgment won't even come up. Amen. Praise God. My sins are sent on before me. But watch it. I preach on stewardship. I want a lot of questions asked. Write them on a piece of paper. Deal with them. I haven't got any questions except one or two. <clears throat> we got the answers. The answer is always found in the Word of God. No problem. Give it with simplicity, rules with diligence, shows mercy, and is cheerful. That's a tough one right there. <laughs> Easy to get mad. <clears throat> so, okay, you're off the hook this time, bird. We don't ever get in the hook again. Or why am you go? How many times, Lord? Seventy times seven. Woo, you know, you four hundred and ninety times in one day. I have shown that in a lifetime, I don't think. <laughs> We're laughing at ourselves. We better be more serious, though, about these things. Let love be without hypocrisy. <clears throat> Abhor the evil, cleave to the good, kindly affection, brotherly love, honor preferring. <clears throat> That's a good one. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Now, these are ministries, and how they are to be performed, your motivation <coughs> with the incentive is these good spirits. So it's a trickle-down economy. Everyone has a ministry. When you talk about prophets, you're in the highest level of all. And that's what he's dealing with. In this age of what? Matthew 24. The time of the presence. The time of the appearing. The time of the parallel ministry. Not parallel. The very ministry of Christ returned to this earth. There will be false prophets. <clears throat> and I tell you, oh, they've made themselves known to the whole world. We are prophets. Brother Branham always took it back. And Paul never mentioned it. So, for instance, I'm a prophet. Granted, I'm a prophet. I'm a prophet. I've got news. Dale is not a prophet. In fact, he is profitless. And you can spell it two ways. Bankrupt financially. <coughs> and never had a thing in the spirit so I come to prophet. Sure, I prophesied. I believe I have a gift of prophecy. But it's not relevant. 
I don't go and use it. I would never. I don't even go to a room with you. If you people want to go in a room, <clears throat> you get a church with a room. I'll go in with you. I'm not afraid to go in. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm not afraid. I'm a little diffident, but not afraid. Not be afraid. <laughs> diffident, but be afraid. In other words, I wouldn't be too much at home in the sense that hey, I've, I've been out of this thing for years. <clears throat> but I would go in there. I'm not supposed to even go in there, but I'd go in. Sure. I don't know. My brother Van said he went. They, 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 they didn't take. He, he didn't have to win. Nobody was in there. They all left. I'm not saying we're going to do that here, but, you know, the, 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 the uh, uh, we're putting the, the welcome mat out. If you, if you like something, look. We can look into all these things. <clears throat> There's no problem. Now, notice they consulted only the priest of that day, the theologian nominations, and in doing that, consulting the priest in the congregation, some of you, they did it wrong. So, you see, this is the hour of consulting the prophet. Ha! <laughs> Did Israel consult Jesus? He said, get rid of that bird. You need to consult Brother Bram. They never did consult any of the eyes. They saw them too. Yeah. Jeremiah got thrown in prison. <clears throat> there wasn't anybody they had to use for. You know the reason Joseph got along? He got too big for him. He became the king. <clears throat> Back in those days, old Abraham, Isaac, and, and uh, Jacob, and and Joseph, they, they were they were two bigwigs. You had a job coping with those fellas. They were it. Abraham was a king in his own right. So was, uh, so was Isaac. So was Jacob. When you consider their, 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 their land, <clears throat> what they owned, everything else, they, they were top men. But you notice how they even had to bow to God, old Isaac. When he, when he blessed <clears throat> Jacob, he couldn't take the blessing back because he knew God spoke to him. And it wasn't Isaac that gave the blessing. It was God that gave the blessing. <clears throat> You think why people wouldn't consult with William Branham? You, you, know, the, you know, the man here is terribly egotistical. He's letting everybody know, listen, you want to know about revival? You want to know there's going to be something in the land? Do you want to know something? Listen, he let the cat out of the bag. Back in the days of, um, oh, yeah, yeah, what's that fellow's name from England uh, in the uh, Secret Service? I remember later on, I didn't grow up over here. They were, no, they, the businessmen and different men knew. Even government men knew that Brother Branham had a gift like Elisha. What's going on there with the Assyrians? Well, I said, well, just a minute, I'll tell you. Well, there's, there's 14,000 Syrians under Captain so-and-so, and there's 6,000 Syrians over in a Captain so-and-so, and, -so, and I'll tell you what, how to get behind them, and you just take them all in tow. And so they knew that Brother Branham could, if he so desired, look behind the Iron Curtain other places, too. And Brother Branham knew he could do it, too. And so they propositioned him. They were smart. But did the church come? No. This man in England, his name, he's got a French name. I remember later on. <clears throat> Not Delacour, but it's a, it's, a, it's a French name. No, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't, they didn't he's turned down. And when he prophesied, they turned it down. Come right against it. Notice, the ark was the word. Well, we read that. No, he didn't. We know that's right, because the ark is Christ, and Christ is the word. See? The ark, or the word, was not in its first ordained, original ordained position. Oh, don't fail to get this church. Everything was perfect. Everything looked good, like a great revival was coming. But because they failed to consult the right person about it. <clears throat> I was in Chattanooga with Brother Branham. Sorelli had just been in Lima. And he told the Lima people, got them all happy, how that he'd heard these footsteps, I think it was, and saw the light coming through the, in, under the door, into the room. And the angel Lord appeared and told him, a great revival is coming. And he went, to, he was in Memphis, I mean, big part in Chattanooga, <clears throat> when we were there. And he got on the platform, prefacing Brother Branham, and he made the remark how, the, how the, this great thing was going to come. And Brother Branham, I tell you, you talk about fortitude. That little fella came on here, and he said, there's a wrong spirit in this room, a false spirit. You've just been told the great revival is coming. There's no revival coming. It's all over. Praise God. Praise the Lord. You talk about lit balloon. <laughs> but listen, <clears throat> they no more received that than nothing. Oh, they just said, that's that curmudgeon, that crank. Who does he think he is? They must have said something like that. Because they turned it down flat in the trail. Yeah. Nobody had any faith in him. And yet he stood in the discerning line that night and showed what nobody else could show. Amen. <clears throat> My heavens. Well, that man came just to me and he said, Brother Bailey, he said, you and Brother Branham do wrong. He said, you, you, none of you are starving. He said, you haven't got any money. 
He said, what you do? He said, you tell the folk you're going to pray for everybody. But, but he said, look, that's the days when five bucks was a good offering. It'd be 50 bucks today. At least I wouldn't set it for less than 50 or 100. He said, why, to get a good offering? He said, you tell everybody you're going to pray for them all, but you'll pray for those that put in the $5 bill first. I said, thank you, brother. I'll tell the prophet. <laughs> so we had a good laugh over that one. <clears throat> we still had our hamburgers while they had T-bone sticks. <laughs> ha, ha. I'd sooner have God's hamburgers than the devil's T-bone sticks. <clears throat> sure. Yeah. They failed to consult the prophet. That's it. Did anybody consult Brother Branham concerning um, this over here in the third chapter of Acts? The restoration, did anybody come and say, Brother Branham, you're the one man, if anybody can tell, you tell us what this is. Did they? No, they didn't. They didn't give her it. <clears throat> no. <clears throat> no. They didn't ask the man who knew all about it. By virtue of the fact, he was the man who could do it. They didn't care about restoration and rapture, which could only come by the prophet. That's Acts, the third chapter. Let's face it. They consulted the priests, consulted the dignitaries, consulted the theologians, consulted the singers, got everybody in one accord, great organization, the military, the, all the force of the nation, everything in harmony for a great meeting, but they failed to consult God. Now they say, well, who needs God? We've got the Bible. Well, it's not that they don't need God to be consulted. <clears throat> That's not a good way of putting it. We say, who needs to get through to God? God's got through to us. Had God got through to them? Well, if God had got through to them, how they would come there in Dollar <clears throat> now, don't miss, miss this. They failed to get it because they hadn't consulted. And by doing that, watch, by going to the priest, the theologian, the military forces, not even considering their God-sent messenger of the hour, Nathan, they did it wrong. They went and picked up the ark and put it on a new cart, put it on a new cart, or a new denomination is going to start up, and not upon the God-given, ordained way to pack it. It was supposed to be packed on the shoulders of the Levites, but you see, when you start wrong, you'll keep going wrong. <clears throat> What's Brother Branham preaching here? Church order. Then you know this message will not denominate. Now, is this a picture of men outside the fivefold taken over, full gossip businessmen, fishers of men? <clears throat> well, and let's put it this way too. The Levites were there. The wrong fivefold ministry took up where they should not have taken up. How are you going to get to the wedding supper in sec according to Acts 3 and 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, and who can prove it? You see? <clears throat> or will we end in the great tribulation? You've got to have somebody in this hour to get us there because deceit is in the land, you see? Now, if a bull is supposed to be directed at a target, you jerk the barrel one thousandths off here to begin with. At a hundred yards, you're four or five inches off. You start wrong. Oh, God, help us to know this thing has started wrong, this great crusade of the hour, and as, as they're so called. If the bullet is the word, and that requires a prophet, where will the bullet hit? <clears throat> William Branham was God's spearhead. All right, again, when times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, which is a great revival, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit having breathed. <clears throat> now, what is that from the presence? It is without a doubt. Matthew chapter 4 and Matthew chapter 12. Jesus began to do and to teach the great end time revival for an exodus. And an end time revival for exodus is not a beginning revival for a genesis. That's where people make their big mistake. <clears throat> That's why Brother Branham said, though you go back to Pentecost, you cannot go back to Pentecost. How can you go back to Alpha? You cannot become Alpha. Omega becomes Alpha. You see the same earmarks. You see, like I said, if a board is oak at both ends, it's oak in the middle. Yeah. If you see what was back there now, you know it's completed. <clears throat> God has brought it through, and the bride is his victory. Yeah. In the face of everything, God's brought a bride through. You watch her come out of the ground one of these days, and you watch who's going to be glorified. People think this is just some kind of a dream. And we're like on the road to maze, but it's not a dream, brother. This is reality. And if we're not bright, I say, Brother Brown, there's a bride out there somewhere that bleeds right, and she's going to be in it. And may we not get in her way. Let's have enough brains to do that. Enough, enough something, brother. <clears throat> brother Brown was God's spearhead. Why? The Bible says so. Elijah must first come. Yeah. End time evangelism. What is it? Closing off. It's here. Get ready to meet the Lord. Come out to meet him. Come out to meet him. Behold the bridegroom. Behold the bridegroom. <clears throat> meet your husband. Know who he is. 
Well, which one of the three is the husband? Father, Son, or Holy Ghost? Father, Son, Holy Ghost, one God. Three manifestations. <clears throat> three dispensations. Now, he said God is not consulted about it. That's today. Priests, religious men are, are consulted. Organizations consulted. Well, when you have such and such, I believe <clears throat> uh, we could get everybody together on those grounds. Don't get everybody together. Just get God's word about it. One person, one word, one word, one person, because God deals with one, right? Then we find that when they do that, what happens? They continue right to the end. They continue to go right on with their same old religious program, which is out of the word of God and the will of God. That thing died years ago, those old dried up things of years ago. <clears throat> That's the life that's passed out of the word. Remember the Bible said heaven and earth shall pass away, but not one word till it be fulfilled. And when the word is fulfilled, it's passed away, and then it becomes what? Example. <clears throat> Example. It had dried up in the days of the Lord Jesus. They didn't know it. I think our time's run out. Okay, we'll get we to the place now where, where well, we just have to take a recap next week, next Sunday. No, I won't be here next, I won't be preaching this Sunday, Brother Brian. When we come back to this, We'll, go, we'll have a recap to bring you up to date, and we'll go on from here. <clears throat> so the Lord bless you. I said, as usual, it's a great pleasure to be with you. And as usual, I didn't get my ten pages done. I got two pages done. Well, I got, what, two leaves and four pages <coughs> done? I'm sorry about that, but I can't help it. <clears throat> just, what can I do? It's, I got to just take my time. And, and the Lord bless you. Let's rise, shall we, just now? <clears throat> and again, see you. A little later on in the week, in the meantime, uh, have a good Christmas. Have a nice time with the children. Teach them what you can about the things of the Lord, uh, for his name's sake, for their good. And may you all prosper in Christ. Our Heavenly Father, as we go now, we ask you to be with the people, Lord, each and every one that is here or represents a home, and all those that are not here, the beloved, which are part of this assembly, which we believe to be a part of Christ. Lord, knowing we welcome everybody and don't put anybody out, but we do stand with your word as we believe it was delivered under vindication in this hour. And so let the people's faith stand not in themselves any longer at any point, no way, shape, and form, but in a vindicated word. This is it. God has spoken, and this is that of that hour. So, Father, we commend ourselves to that message more thoroughly than ever, believing most considerably <coughs> and conclusively having considered and arrived at the conclusion that this word in us is the conduit of the Holy Spirit to bring the light of the word of this hour, which is immortality. And by your grace, Lord, we stretch forth our hands and take of the tree of life to live forever. Because we know there's some here unto whom it is predestined. Lord, knowing your servant here can go off the scene, which is perfectly fine and good, if it's for the pleasure of our Lord to do so. But there will be those who are here who will not have to mold in the ground or come up, although that's marvelous just even to think about what a tremendous, tremendous thing that is. But there'll be others standing here with a tremendous, marvelous opportunity and experience. One day, the reaching will have been successfully concluded, and the dead will be standing here, and that quick sweep that Brother Brandon said will go over them, and they'll just... Not a wrinkle, no more blood in those veins, no, nothing that's mortal any longer, but immortal, likened unto our blessed Savior himself, to whom we'll be caught up to meet at the wedding supper. We cannot praise you enough for this, Lord. What a tremendous thing to know that here is a Christmas that we can honor more than we ever before of commemorating your birthday amongst us in flesh knowing that you are here now in the form of the Holy Spirit, and you have seen the travail of your soul, it's all but over. You are seeing the triumph of the blood and the Spirit. We are your victory, ready to be caught away to the eternities. We cannot praise enough. And under the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, the all power and honor and glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So Lord, richly bless you. Just take the name of Jesus with you.